Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not going to do an intro because uh, I just did it. Uh, so we're just going to launch right in. So um, uh, pitch deck overview is what we're doing today. Um, just as a little reminder, I know we've gone over this every week, but we kind of have people in and out. So just um, poster is typically reserved for someone who's a TRL three to five. So a little bit earlier in the development cycle. And then someone who's developed a, who would pitch is farther along. So just a, a TRL of a six or more. Um, the materials, uh, as I've uh, reinforced here, are the quad chart, information paper, poster, and pitch deck. Uh, pitch deck may not be required for everyone. If you're a little earlier on, if you're that TRL 325, um, then you don't need to uh, produce a pitch deck. So that's the asterisk there. But otherwise, all of these things are um, repackaging of the same basic information. So, um, but for different audiences. So your quad chart is going to be distributed most broadly. The information paper will be more targeted in distribution. And then the poster is kind of hitting both of those audiences. So it's just kind of how is that information organized and packaged into um, each of these different documents. You'll receive real time feedback, whether you're doing a poster session or a pitch session. And either way, um, your information will be socialized. So that's, I know that it's maybe a, points felt like we've talked a lot about these documents, but the point is for all of that, that they will then take those documents, the technology scouts, and socialize them throughout their contacts within the Department of Defense. So if we're all ready to go, they're excited about your technology, you just take them, uh, you send an email with your three attachments or four attachments, and they send them along to the appropriate contacts. So that's, that's the, the whole idea. So we're We've done all these prep sessions to ensure that there isn't a, I don't know, an all-nighter that needs to get done um, after the technology transfer day, because someone asked for your quad chart, you have it, it's done, it's ready, it's um, formatted um, in the way that the Department of Defense wants. General guidelines limit pitch to one technology. Um, all, you know, a lot of the information can be lifted for your pitch deck from your quad chart, your information paper, um, or the poster. Um, again, mark whether that concept is patented or there's other, you know, significant intellectual property considerations. You know, if it's owned by the university or something like that, what's that licensing agreement look like? Just so, again, I think I've said this multiple weeks, there are no wrong answers. It's just what that, it just affects what the conversation looks like. So, um, and who they're kind of talking to about um, the rules and responsibilities and rights to, um, for, for any of these things. Um, don't put anything classified or disclosure kind of secret sauce in the poster. And that would mostly be on the, well, in, and that will mostly be in the information paper, honestly, um, when you're discussing the how. Uh, don't, you know, share that proprietary algorithm or whatever it is that you've developed that really makes it work. Because these are, you know, now public disclosures um, that may affect your intellectual property position or, you know, otherwise, you know, uh, um, you know, could, could hinder your ability to the, move forward with the technology. So, you know, you're, you're sharing, um, you know, some technical details about kind of how it works and what, um, what considerations and, and methodologies and stuff that you're following, but not the, like, you know, the, the secret sauce or, or whatever it is that um, makes a Big Mac so delicious. Don't do that part. Um, the pitches are attached to the email sent by tech scouts to those potential customers or users. Um, so if you're pitching, there'll be um, 15 minutes in front of the tech scallops, uh, in tech scallops, in front of the tech scouts. Um, you have eight minutes maximum is, is typically, because they ask a lot of questions. So uh, really think about the fact that while you have a 15 minute session, um, a little over half of it is you kind of launching into your pitch and then you want to just make sure that you know your slides really well uh, so that when they have a specific question you know where to jump what slide to get to so that you can answer that question so i mean there um there's a good amount of like kind of dicta in these uh pitch decks as well so you've got kind of your your main points your main thrust what what can you kind of cover in the eight minutes and then be very knowledgeable about 
the rest of your slides so that if you didn't quite get to it or you didn't quite cover it, then as they have specific questions about you know, use cases or application, then you can just kind of jump to those to, um, to answer those. So um, then you know, kind of five minutes playing around for a Q&A and it'll obviously take longer than that, closer to seven really. Um, 11 slides maximum for the pitch and we'll go through the, uh, the outline there. Um, addendum slides are allowed also. So, I mean, the, the main thrust, like I'm saying, is the 11 slides. Um, <clears throat> but also, if you think that there's a you know, particularly compelling graph or, or chart or something like that that really explains what it is you're, you're trying to do, um, then just have those as extras in the back um, so that you can pull those up in case a question about those comes up or a way that you can kind of work it in. And then you may include a prop if appropriate. So, um, maybe a prototype of the product or, um, uh, I, I don't know, videos kind of eat into your time. So I would be less um, compelled, you know, I, I think that would be less um, uh, preferable or, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend that so much. But, you know, if you, you work on uh, a specific type of product that you can just kind of show and it's, um, you know, how it works or, or how it does what it does or what it does, um, then sure, yeah, a, a prop makes more sense and can do a lot more than maybe photos can. So just, again, what, what you're trying to do is communicate in the best possible way um, the fact that you, know, you can uh, solve a problem for the Department of Defense. So this is the slide deck overview. Uh, we, uh, the template in, um, in your box folder uh, basically it has a slide for each of these. So uh, that's what we're going through. So um, <clears throat> there's the, you know, the, the technology overview, then it gets into your company information. Um, you do need to kind of quickly move through those though to get to the relevance to the DOD. Um, maturity and scalability are things that you can cover pretty quickly also. Um, and then I think you really want to focus on though the cost and schedule um, because that's again, uh, as we've talked about the quad chart and the information paper, that's where you're articulating your ask. You know, what's the cost to make this happen and what's the timeline for you to deliver it? So um, while uh, I wouldn't necessarily focus on the order um, of, uh, of how these fall in terms of what you should focus on more of or less on or whatever, but to just say, okay, I'm gonna get right into what's the technology, um, company performance, sure. Why, how it applies to the Department of Defense. Maturity and scalability are things they'll have questions about, but you can kind of, you know, not, you can save some time on those discussions and then really get into cost and schedule and, you know, and then, you know, kind of summarizing and, and um, um, really articulating, you know, that ask and what's the point of this conversation? Um, you came into this meeting wanting something, needing something, and so, uh, hopefully that uh, that discussion that, that ensues after your pitch um, is focused on that. You know, what, what's, the, what's the partnership moving forward? Uh, so now just getting into the specifics of each of these. And again, these are all laid out in the template that's available in your box folder. Um, you know, making sure you have a company logo or name, um, I guess giving us a shout out, that's kind of nice. Um, date of the presentation and the photo of the product if available. So if someone's just looking at the little preview in their email or the attachment, then they just, they have a clear idea of like, oh yeah, I don't remember the company name exactly. That doesn't resonate with me, but I do know, you know, what, what product or service or, or I remember that logo. Um, so just, you know, a, like a visual cue um, is what I would highly recommend on then the title slide as well. Because people are busy. Um, you are as well, I'm sure. Um, the technology overview slide, um, and this is mostly the upper left quadrant of the quad chart. So if we've completed the quad chart and we're done with that, then we should be able to fairly quickly pop this content into here. But what does the technology do? Um, and that's, while interesting, I think the bigger question is what problem does it solve? Um, how is the solution better than current options? Um, uh, I think that, I don't know. I think if you really focus on the, what does the problem solve, that's probably the, the biggest part. 
um, I guess I just hear a lot of pitches or talk to a lot of entrepreneurs um, where uh, it is just, you know, kind of better, faster, cheaper, whatever, but you hear versions of that all the time. So if you have a clear idea of what is the problem specific to this audience and how does your technology address that problem, then I think you can almost, you know, skip over then this fourth bullet point. So don't focus on how it works. This is not the time for that slide. It's the technology overview. So this isn't your secret sauce part. Um, and you know, graphics or photos to just kind of help them again with visual cues, understand what's, what's happening. Company performance slides. Um, this is one that can take a lot of a presentation and it, and it shouldn't. You're, you're standing there, you've got the academic credentials or you have you know, a company that, that you already work with. Um, so you speak for yourself, you know, and you're making a good presentation. So while, you know, you can kind of share uh, the, the background and expertise of the team and academic, academic credentials and, and all of the, you know, past awards and, and past contracts that you've won and all of that. And, and those things are important, but I don't know that I would, you know, um, spend, if you're trying to cut down on time or what have you, uh, you know, show the show pictures of the principals and, and their uh, their industry knowledge or industry background. Um, but then I think you it's more important that you uh, that they're, uh, they're technology scouts. They get that they're working with a lot of with people who have maybe less, you know, maybe business experience or something. And so that with their main interest is the technology. They're not company scouts or whatever. They're technology scouts. So focus on the technology piece. So this slide, while important to have in there as you know, backing information, is not necessarily one that um, um, I would spend like the most time on. Although, put a picture of yourself. Um, that's nice too. Uh, so that again, they have a visual cue of, oh, I remember that pitch. And I'm not 100% on the technology, but I thought they made a good presentation. And so then that's somebody that. I could work with or I can see making an introduction to. Um, and then why should this company, um, you know, work with Department of Defense? So um, if they have a long history of, of um, you know, delivering for the Department of Defense, that's great. Um, that, and then again, to the technology piece though, demonstrate the value and then demonstrate stability. So, um, <clears throat> you know, just a, a um, history of working with um, in this realm uh, would, be, would be your big things to highlight. Um, so this would be the bottom left quadrant of your quad chart here. Um, and again, this kind of gets into uh, the awards, recognition, certifications. Um, <clears throat> all of those are backing, you know, they, they support. Um, but I don't know that they're the, they're not necessarily what the technology scouts would um, make a decision based on. Those reinforce the decision that is being made or um, to, to, pat, to share that technology and, and pass it along to uh, commanding officers or whatever. Um, it adds additional credibility, but <clears throat> what the decision is really based on is, is the technology and its ability to solve a problem. So um, this stuff is, is important, but I, I think you would have gotten your foot in the door with the technology first, and then these just add further credibility or, or backing to your claims. Um, relevance to Department of Defense. Um, and I think we've talked quite a bit about this, but to have an idea of the capability need, the combatant command, the community is of interest, um, which specific command you would then be working with. So, you know, understanding that end user, um, if it's for uh, the Naval Air Force Command, they probably have different needs and specifications than uh, Navy C, you know, Nav C does. Um, so under what conditions does it operate, um, you know, in the open ocean versus, you know, from the ground or, or whatever. So, you know, just kind of understanding um, and some of those conversations, maybe this is just the beginning of those types of conversations, but an understanding that um, they have very specific needs and that you're able to then adjust your solution to the needs that they have. So, um, how does your solution meet the specific needs of your identified customers? Um, what's the like current, um, you know, how is this problem maybe currently solved? Uh, so I guess I use any, like maybe a kind of a software example. Um, you maybe have a software that really, uh, 
kind of expedites the, the download, alteration, and then re-upload of I don't know, an Excel spreadsheet or something. That's something I do all the time. So I, in some ways, I would want to buy that, that piece of software because it, it helps me download something, I don't know, change, uh, change this column or swap these columns around and then re-upload the thing. Um, and, but while it may help my life, uh, or whatever, uh, once a month when I need to do this certain kind of reporting, uh, really that task takes five minutes and I don't know that I would buy a $500 software solution to do that. So your solution may not be, you know, your competitors may not be a different, you know, that no other software does this. Your, 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 um, your competitive competition might just be Josh and a whole bunch of people like him do this tedious task of using Excel and then they download, make a change, re-upload. Um, and that's, that could be in some cases competition. So it might not be a one-to-one -one, um, competitor uh, where there's another software company doing exactly this. It might just be the status quo of a tedious task every hour or every, every month gets done. Um, and it gets, but it gets done, you know, it's annoying but it's relatively cheap to address it in this way. And so that will be a significant thing to overcome. So, um, that, so that's a, a, a software example. I'm sure there are others in other industries, but what is the current solution and really kind of addressing what, you know, what that current solution um, is in all, in all its forms. And then why is your solution better than current options? Um, unique capabilities, unique features, um, and then can you provide a contextual example or use case? Um, and this would probably be, um, I would give a second slide to, to this kind of thing, you know, a, a, just a, a full on example. And maybe that's just because I work best with examples, um, but to really work through, you know, what, what that workflow would look like or how it, you know, a decision tree or flow chart of how things currently operate, how the, um, the inclusion of this would, you know, maybe cut out a, a couple of tedious tasks or, or something in the case of the, of the software. And so then how things would just kind of like flow more smoothly. So that would require um, and demonstrate an understanding of the customers that you're working with and, and the challenges of the work that they do, and then how your solution actually solves that problem. So I think that the use case thing could be really powerful. And so you can kind of talk in more generalities, maybe on the first on the first slide, but then the second one, get into dig into an example. Um, I think you know that would be to me at least as a tech scout um, a persuasive case. Catherine, are you going to take these ones? Yes, I just okay. Sure, you're done. Um, okay, so I'm just going to kind of breeze through these again, as Josh said. Um, you know, they're all on here for you. Um, and just to reiterate what he said on the last slide, I think from last year sitting in on pitches, like the use case is really a, a great way to show your past performance. So like he said earlier, you can kind of breeze through those slides of your past performance. But then, you know, when you get to the last slide and the relevance to the DOD, can you provide an example of a customer you worked with and how you, you know, saved them money or made things more efficient? Um, just something tangible for the DOD to kind of like think about how they would use your technology. So then um, for this slide, you know, again, less than a minute because it's all on your quad chart and your information paper, it'll be taken from the bottom right quadrant. Um, and it's just, what is your TRL? Um, describe why are you at that TRL? How you got there? What has been the history of developing your technology? And then any specific results or specific tests that you have done so far. Um, next slide. Okay, so then um, this slide, you'll talk about technology scalability. And again, spending less than a minute on this because a lot of this information, again, they'll have it in front of them. They'll have your um, quad chart and your information paper. So, you know, the pitch you really want to use to show like how the DOD could use it. So this like really specific information they can reference themselves. So you kind of want to breeze through this. 
Um, so how large and small can the technology scale? Um, how is the scalability of your technology relevant to the DOD? So are you able to scale if they needed, you know, quite a few within a certain time frame, are you able to provide that? Is your TRL really high enough where you can scale? Um, and what value does that scalability offer to the DOD? So they might be looking for something very soon um, that's similar to your technology. And if you can provide that for them quicker than another company, then that's going to be, you know, that's going to provide them value. Um, and so then do you need any special equipment or are you ready to go if you were able to scale? And if they ask, that is a question that got asked a lot. Um, they probably will go back to this slide when they ask questions. Like if they, if they really like your technology and they want to use it, then they're going to spend some time talking to you about how they can get, you know, a certain quantity and how quickly and then what you would need to get there. Okay, so next slide. Um, so then cost and schedule, as Josh men mentioned, this one you could spend a little more time on and you'll probably get again some more questions along with the scalability because if they like your technology, then they're going to want to know how much it's going to cost and what the schedule would be like to get that technology. So, but be realistic, you know, I know ever you, I know you want to sell to them, but, but um, you don't want to get in a situation where they're trying to talk to you and they um, socialize you and then it turns out that your costs are way higher than you discussed. So really just be realistic about it. Um, so you want to say, you know, your cost estimate in relation to current spend to solve the problem. So does this replace a process or product that's already in use? Does it save money or does it save time? Does it save on labor? Um, discuss all of those things. And if you can't provide a cost estimate, explain, um, you know, then why your technology is providing them value or what is um, the advantage that you give. Um, and again, like I said earlier, you know, be realistic about how long it would take to, to get to market. Um, and, and again, like you would have talked about on the last slide of scalability, what do you need from them to get there? Um, do you need certain equipment? Do you need how much money do, can you estimate that you would need um, labor, et cetera? Okay, next slide. So then you go into your summary slide. Um, and I would just here reiterate, what's the relevance? Why should the customer, so the DOD and your community of interest specifically, why should they care? Um, and again, I would talk specifically about the community of interest that you, because it shows that you did research and it shows like that you know exactly how they would use it um, and who would use it and not just the overall Department of Defense. Um, what is the value and what is unique about your solution? Again, don't give away any proprietary information, but you know, what is unique? What are you, and it could be that you're saving time, you're saving money, stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, one key takeaway, what is the one thing you want them to remember about, you know, your technology and you? And um, this, I would say, should be, you know, your value, um, you know, not just about your company or you personally, but it's really, they're going to really want to know, like, what's the value that you see that you're bringing to the DOD? Who would be using it? How would it help the warfighter? If you use the words help the warfighter, that will, that will get you big points. Um, uh, they like that language a lot. So if you reiterate on this last slide that you see the warfighter using it how and this is how it can help them, that, that would be great. Um, and you know, then thank them. Things are a little more formal with the DOD. So just make sure that um, you're thanking them. And then they will have questions, they will have quite a few questions. So you want to save time for q and I think, do we have another side? Okay, so you, if you get time, from what I saw last year, um, they might start asking you questions in the middle of your pitch. Be okay with that. Be, I think 
it's a good thing. I know if you practice a presentation that you get um, kind of in that mode of I need to finish my presentation, I worked so hard, I have all this stuff memorized or whatever. But um, you know, if they start asking questions, it's a good thing. Just go with the flow and answer their questions. Um, we saw a lot of people didn't really get through their pitch deck. So that's just kind of a warning. Um, but since this is a virtual event, it may be different this year. It's harder to interrupt um, and ask all these questions, I think, um, virtually. So if you have supplemental slides um, that didn't fit and that you think would be useful, you know, I would practice and anticipate, and you can work with Josh and Tracy and I, um, anticipate some of the questions that they might ask. And then, you know, if they're gonna ask a question about how, um, you know, your technology works or some more about your past performance, um, have a slide ready so that when you're answering that question, you can, you know, quick turn to that slide. And again, um, I would practice this presentation being pretty flexible with, if they ask you a question when you're on slide eight and it's relevant to the supplemental slide that you created at the end, you know, flip through to the end and answer the question with that slide. Um, so just have maybe some more data or um, some more description or pictures of examples um, on hand that you could see them asking questions about. Catherine then, Brittany Duncan has a question. So, oh, okay. yeah, we can, yeah. All right, this was a logistics question. Will one of you be monitoring chat and or hand raising to help kind of interrupt us so that we can't answer questions in the middle if it's not a situation? I have no idea what their Zoom uh, protocol is, if they're just gonna unmute and jump in or uh, how that's gonna work, but it'd be great if somebody was moderating and helping with that. Yeah, so we will be moderating. We still have to work this out. You know, this is like new for everyone with the, the virtual, going virtual. So we are working on that. Some, you know, we'll have people moderating, you know, your slides and definitely hand raising. I can't, I can't, um, you know, say for certain that the text counts won't just unmute themselves and jump in. Um, that's why we really, try and warn you guys and have you practice with us so that you can be more comfortable with your pitch because from what i saw last year in person they will just interrupt and jump in and i know if you're giving a presentation that can be unnerving and so to just be okay with that um but since it is virtual we will try and and you know mod monitor and kind of like mediate that as best as we can um, I think the, the race, I mean, to this great example, thank you, uh, Brittany, for bringing that up. I think the race hand function is probably one that doesn't get used enough, but it does help you get to just a natural stopping point where you can't. So it would, um, I, because we have so many tech scouts that are calling in, even if there will be some in the room, um, that may, you know, we've got to somehow navigate that part because it will be easier to just interrupt if you are appearing in person. Um, but I think for the, the vast majority of the tech scouts, they will be Zooming and um, I, I, a raise hand option is really good. And then we'll, we will have a moderator there to kind of, you know, make sure uh, that uh, questions get addressed, but also that they're not just straight up interruptions, which um, to Catherine's point can, uh, can be un unsettling for sure. And, and also, because it is virtual, you know, maybe they won't be interrupting as much, which then means it's super important that you time yourself and you leave enough time at the end for Q&A, because that's what you really want. Um, you know, it'll show what they're interested in. It'll get them to clarify things and, you know, remember you more if they're able to kind of be a part of the presentation. So, um, you know, maybe the virtual will allow you to just breeze through your pitch, but then we're, you're going to want to save quite a bit of time for Q&A. Um, and then, yeah, we, you want to include, again, a point of contact slide. Um, if you have had federal and state grants, um, because they will ask for that and they will want all those contacts. And so just to have it ready 
um, will make things easier for them. And also if you have, sorry, if you have, um, if you have perform past performance with any government agencies, they will want, um, they will want the contacts for those as well. I think that, Josh, is there another slide? No. That's it. So, um, oh, other than contact information for Tracy and I, um, one last just little reminder uh, that next week would be, is an opportunity for, uh, for us to practice. Uh, whether it is just talking through a quad chart, you know, wanting to being more comfortable with that or uh, sharing a poster uh, that that you've completed now with this DOD bent, uh, then we can, you know, talk, talk through that. Um, or, you know, so we're just going to reserve this time. And I think we will, it'll be a little bit longer of a time uh, because we want anybody who, who appears to then have plenty of, uh, of opportunity and I would just highly recommend that that you practice and it, it's a it is a very different format, especially online um, uh, to to uh, to pitch. I know that when I do webinars, actually, um, it's helpful to not have the video on because I, I walk and talk and then I call in and I talk through and I just talk through my slides that way. Um, and that helps me. So, you know, just kind of finding the way that you do things so that you feel um, the most comfortable and also familiarizing yourself with, with your slides too, so that you know, oh, I need to get to slide 16 to answer this question that Brett or Tim or whoever has just kind of asked me. So um, I, I heard that multiple times in the pitches I was in as well, or you know, kind of feedback afterward about people um, not knowing their slides. So uh, you know, knowing, knowing where that information is so that you're not wasting time looking for that chart that you just know is in there. You know? so, um, because then uh, that's something that, you know, speaks to, uh, I don't know, I guess, you know, as an indicator of organization or, you know, kind of preparation for, for that event. So I know we've spent a lot of time talking about documents and how to get ready and how to be ready and all of that. But uh, we're hoping that with the preparation that we've done here, then it won't be so flustering day of if you get those questions because you'll feel fully prepared. And then also in the event that Brett says, you know what, tomorrow I'd like to send, I'd like to send my socialization emails, which is something that happens, then it doesn't feel like I need to make last minute edits to my quad chart before he does that. You just are like, yeah, that's great. Please share. I'm ready to go. So, um, so for, bo for both of those reasons, day of and then for follow up, that way um, you're, you're well prepared. So we're trying to, you know, I know it's been kind of a, a last or a, kind of a long four weeks really of, of Friday mornings, but, but we really do think that this is what um, will, will best prepare participants uh, to, to take advantage of, of the technology transfer day deal. So um, further details will follow. Um, we're, we're doing the recording now, obviously, so that'll be posted too for anyone who's missed it. Um, Tracy's, uh, we'll send out the link to do the one-on-ones with Tracy also. Uh, we'd like all documents due uh, Wednesday, uh, at, you know, or as close to that deadline earlier would be better, uh, so that we have time to, to get those things finalized and, and sent to tech scouts. And, and then we've got some logistics considerations to, to think about as well. So Brittany, thanks for bringing those up. Um, and anyone else, you know, I, pitching in, in a virtual environment, um, will just be very different. And um, so it's that itself is a little bit of an experiment that, that um, we appreciate everyone's kind of patience and, and questions about as we kind of troubleshoot some of these things ourselves. So um, if people have questions, uh, then we're available here, Catherine and I. Um, but otherwise, thanks so much for, for coming uh, this morning and um, have, a, have a good weekend. Yeah, Josh, I thought it might be um, helpful if maybe we said like one thing that we noticed um, people did, you know, not super, like not great last year or one kind of major faux pas that they made while pitching. Do you have oh. anything like that from what we witnessed last year? That that might I think it's important that the, the formality part that you mentioned is really important. Um, because it is not something, and I think also now in a virtual environment, I mean, I have a 
t-shirt on today. It's a nice t-shirt with a pocket, but it's still a t-shirt. Um, that there's a, there's a greater level of formality with Department of Defense than we may be used to in our day-to-day -day lives. So I've been calling Brittany, Brittany, for example, and I should have been at the very least Ms. Duncan. Um, and so like, you know, the for using uh, like courtesy titles um, is actual, and I think the vast majority will be misters. That's just the way of it, um, uh, likely. So there will be a lot of, you know, kind of Mr. Sharinghausen, Mr. Fowler or whatever uh, that I think is, is more a faux pas. I don't think it's gonna sink the opportunity at all, but it's just something that to me would require a brain shift. Um, yeah, great. And it's Dr. Duncan. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure it's Dr. Duncan. Yeah, no question. No um, problem. You know, they usually have their title. Sorry. Uh, I know it's, it's also important if it's Captain so-and-so that it's, right, that's going to get under their skin like Miss would under ours, potentially. Uh, and so how would we uh, know that? Is it going to be in the thing or are we going to have a, a sheet ahead of time of who might be attending and we could refer to that? We will get a sheet ahead of time with preferred courtesy titles. I think that's certainly doable. That's great. And yeah, and if you, you know, if you are Dr. Duncan, I would put that on your slide, introduce yourself as doctor. Um, and then I guess for, for me, I, I think one of the biggest things I saw was companies focusing too much on the beginning slides. Um, you know, and how it works. Everyone, obviously you think that your technology is the best. That's why you are put pouring your heart and soul into it and working on it so long. And we understand that, um, but really try and not spend too much time on how it works, um, how great it is, but more the value to the DOD. Get specific, show that you did your research. How can the warfighter use this and why is it helpful and then also get to scalability or and cost and schedule um that i would say is is more important um to get through that and if they have more questions about how it works then they will ask those yeah and i think that you know they tend to be kind of down to brass tacks kind of folks so you know you're in this series of trainings and pitching for a reason. So, um, you know, and they will be more able to say, yeah, it's interesting that you need a million dollars in the next three months, but that's just not where the budget would be for that. And so that's a, a an easier conversation actually, although it, it would, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's a kind of a tougher conversation, but at least it's, we just, you know, don't have the budget for that or what have you, you know, or we, we don't know anyone that would be able to green light that a project like that um, uh, at that scale or whatever. So I think, you know, there's some, uh, 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 so that, so that part also maybe uh, would, would be a difference as opposed to then talking about the technology and how great it works, but then also saying, this is where I'd like to get and why we're ha even having this conversation is we think that you know department of defense maybe through an sbir funding or some other funding mechanism could help us get to that point and this is what we'd like to talk about so i i think while those things can be kind of awkward as um you know kind of socially or whatever to do um that is also um you know what they're looking for is, is a technology that could be implemented and deployed to the Department of Defense. So, um, so those are kind of more uh, straightforward conversations uh, than maybe, you know, would, would be typical in, you know, a more academic or, or startup uh, situation. Yes, but however, if they, if you have proved that yours would be, your technology would be an immense value to the warfighter and you have proof that it can work um, and they love it, they will do we have seen them get very excited about things and they will do what they can um, to get you funding or to get you those next steps. Um, so. Yeah, but it just, it makes, I think it colors the conversation. So like I've said in the past, like there are no like wrong TRLs or there's no maybe wrong intellectual property position. Uh, you know, uh, again, 
the, the ask is not necessarily wrong either or your timeline to delivery. It's just, what will this conversation look like? Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's all just little bits of data. Um, so it does reveal your hand somewhat. Um, and obviously there's some flexibility on, on budgets and timelines and things. Um, so if there's you know, greater customization or something, it may take longer and it may cost more and, and things like that. So, I mean, um, so those are all points of conversation, but to just kind of uh, make it clear that, you know, the point of this conversation and why I think this could be a mutually beneficial relationship is, um, you know, is X and, you know, kind of make that really articulate that. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions? You guys feel free to jump in or type them. I think that's it. Okay, yeah, hearing none. Um, hopefully see people next week to practice. Otherwise, we got some homework to do and um, folders to update and things like that. And we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Let me stop recording. How do I do that?